Things that you have already marking collateral built? Um, no. Our stuff is still under development. Also, you use okay. the mic. The microphone. What about the live work play? That's, I think Eric is yeah, referring to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, that is not, uh, those materials are not yet finalized, and I would have to double check. It's against donor development, and I don't know that the mission of the city would actually specifically be spelled okay. out in it. Obviously, we'd be talking about business industry, family tourism. Um, right. But not specific to outlining the city. Um, I do know you've got the the poster, you know, the 22 by 28, I believe, down the hall. But that's a printout, and, and you'd have to update it anyways. <coughs> with some of the other things that would change as far as who you serve and impact. I mean, which is again just looks like a printout. Um, I think it says 2013 anyway. So, are there council members that feel strongly any other way? Not in the least. No. Um, you know, I had to put that at the beginning or at the end. The launch it's in there, you know. Yeah. We have a council member that feels extremely strong about that, so and the rest of the council doesn't care. Okay. So I, I have no I don't think we have a problem making families first. So uh, um, Thank you. to competitively position the city of Manistee as the community of choice and destination for families, businesses, industry and tourists. Thank you. Right. 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 I think that's good. Right. That change. And actually, it does work more closely with the place making. Of course, just fine. Yep. 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 Um, let me see here. So, um, let me think here. And if you'll also recall for the vision, we did change the last line where um, 
This is a city whose prosperity continues into the future. It was changed to a city whose prosper prosperous past continues into the future. Correct. So, okay, we're all in favor of that. Um, the purpose, there was no change. The values, there was no change. And then who we serve and impact added in um, AES, the Main Street DDA, neighboring communities, and West Shore Medical Center. <coughs> Any other changes with those at this point? Okay. Um, what we'll do now is, and I'll have Tim jump into this as well, um, reviewing the strategic goals um, on pages that begin on page eight. And, and we want to update oh, the accomplishments also. Oh. I mean, I, we don't I think we have to do that here today with, with council. But do you want staff? Do that as part of do you, want, you want staff staff to work with you about dating? Part of the strategy. We'll update that right now. Okay. All right. So starting on page. Right. Okay. Sorry. This is my. Oh, I can do that. Okay. Which page will we start? Page four. Are you talking about the accomplishments? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Page eight is where the, the, the goal started. Three years of strategic goals. Okay. I understand. Okay. So, jump on. <laughs> jump on. You do realize we don't have split screens, so we can't look at both. <laughs> okay. Oh. Split screens. So, we're going to begin with um, page eight. <laughs> Um, and we're gonna, and we've done this, we found an easier way to do this in past years. Uh, simply going through the goals and strategies, um, identifying what's been done, that goes into the accomplishment category, uh, what still remains to be done and is relevant, and what you want to change or add. So, uh, just an anecdotal uh, note on the economic development jobs. In this past week, we've talked with several businesses. Um, pretty much all in the downtown area that um, are reporting positive things. Uh, some as a result of the vote, which is great. And uh, secondarily, we also talked to a business this morning that is planning to add you know, four, to, four to six new jobs. So in the dead of winter, those are good ways to Yes. Yeah. Amazing. That's excellent. Um, so, economic development of jobs, um, we'll just work our way through this, um, and I'm going to assume that everybody has had a chance to go through this, so we'll move quickly and s please slow us down if we need to. Uh, goal 1.1, 1 .1, um, completing a comprehensive economic development strategy, if you, if you want Kathy can address any of these if you're uncertain as to the status of that. Um, I guess the first question is, is, is that still a uh, uh, goal that we have on our plate and should, it, should we uh, sustain that as is? I think we should sustain it as is. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, one thing I want to, uh, I'll address as part of that is that we have uh, a large number of communities that by about May of this year will updated um, master plans and every one of those master plans has an economic development strategy so we're actually getting real close to being able to package all that up county-wide which is a good thing and first time will never be achieved so that would be a great deal um, so goal 1.2 achieve 100 percent occupancy in the industrial park and renaissance park and other industrial pro properties um, that goal has been discussed pretty much every year. Um, and I think where the council has ended up with it is that even though we have a ways to go, that council felt in prior years that we should keep it simply because um, it's an important goal to have. So, And I wanted to add one thing to that under 1.2, possibly 1.2.2, mm -hmm. to prioritize, to include the sale of the property in the M55 um, industrial park or change its de um, designation or zoning. So either to to sell or redesignate, <coughs> is that? Yeah, redesignate or change its zoning. Okay. Could you All say right. that one more time, please? 
to um, include the sale of property, to prioritize it to include the sale of property in the M55 industrial park or change its designation or slash zoning. When does the Renaissance zone designation run out? It starts, it's already started the process of running okay. out now. Okay. Help me understand and redesignate the zoning. I'm not sure I understand. From, to start working on changing it from a Renaissance zone. Well, that will happen. I don't think it just happens automatically. Yeah, I don't think the, the the designation of Renaissance zone is more of a tax <coughs> break designation. Right. It doesn't impact the zoning use in Manistee Township. Manistee Township still zones the property uh, according to manufacturing industry. So you, you have, you have the, it's almost like an overlay, Mayor Pro Tem. So the Renaissance Zone is kind of like an overlay over the Manistee Township zoning district. It was basically an incentive. Absolutely. Correct, mm -hmm. right. But I mean, you don't, we don't need to, in, unless we want to make a request of Manistee Township to rezone that property, um, which I don't believe we do, um, I don't think it would require us to do anything because that underlying zoning stays the way it is. They just lose that incentive bracket, right. if that makes sense. What I was wondering is if, if because the business after business, the last one we had closed last year, correct? Two years ago. Yeah. Two, two years ago now. So okay. the property has just been sitting there. Yes. Um, is there any possi possibility that it could be rezoned residential? Or is it basically only set up for industrial hmm. or commercial? Because there are there are larger lots. Five acres. Yeah. You, you can uh, reduce that to water and sewer on site out there too. Yeah. Good question. You know, that, and that would would be, it, you know, would it be easier to sell mar market and sell the property if that is our intent? If it were zoned residential? rather than industrial or commercial. And, and again, the underlying zoning is not under the purview of the city of Manistee. Correct. The underlying zoning is the purview of Manistee Township. We just own that property, zone. right? Correct. They zone so it. We we're just talking about a private okay. property owner that has to comply with Manistee Township's zoning ordinance. So we almost, as so you say, we, we made a request. But correct. Okay. To looking at it. But so however, does that make sense in lieu of development that's occurring on 55 now? And is that really? That's the question. One of the things we could do is NST Township is one of those townships that is right now working on updating their master plan. Mm -hmm. And um, we can certainly <coughs> find out the answer to that and, and have they looked at that property and with respect to any future goals. Correct. There is no business in there right now. The business that's in there right now is let me make sure I get this right. Metal Line, Metal Works is in Bloodington. Metal Line, Metal Line was located previously and on Pine Creek Road. Yes. And Metal Line has been in that facility and operating for six, six years, six plus years? Yeah. And they're still operating. Yeah. And they're still operating, correct. <clears throat> and then there's another business, so Metal Line, Coming off of M55, it's about halfway down in your right hand side of that winding road. <clears throat> if you continue to head towards East Lake, I'm not sure if that's called East Lake Road or not, but we all know how to get to East Lake, um, you'll, you'll come across North Point's property. Mm -hmm. uh, North Point? Yeah. Yes. yes. North Point. Um, that's a, a, it was a small manufacturing uh, that the AES assisted us with four or five years ago when we were coming under the gun of having to repack, repay back our Renaissance zone. Uh, and we encouraged and incentivized North Point to put their, their industry in there, which saved us a half million to a million dollars of payback to do so. They currently are no longer there, and I believe that property is on the market. Wasn't there another? Morning, wasn't there another lot sold? Mm -hmm. Wasn't there another lot sold there in the? There was a lot sold about 13 to 14 years ago to a company called Distributed Power. Mm -hmm. 
Some of you may remember that, yeah. some of you may not remember that. Distributed power, they were a, if I understand this correctly, and I wasn't here, they were going to be a peaker when, for an energy peaking plant. Um, they, have, they never built. So we accepted their funds, and they never built a facility out there. I do not recall which lot they were on. In addition, you'll recall that the Elmer's plant, which is across the road from M55, was also part of that overall Renaissance Zone package when it was built in, I think, 97-ish, mm -hmm. 98, somewhere in that time frame. But getting back to this goal and Mayor Pro Tem Zering's comments, that's almost getting too specific, don't you think? Because in that strategy 2.21, we kind of talk about ensure the city of has the intent and capacity to quickly react to potential new business. Would that I think kind of infer what she was referring to without being too specific? Yep, yep. I believe it does. And, and, and now that I, I, that's the first time I've heard that concept, that that's something we can't have a conversation about. And if you'd like, we'll follow up Nasty Township and ask if they have been looking at that. So, just to retrace here, uh, 1.1, we're going to leave alone. 1.2, I hear that we should leave, or I haven't heard any um, negative thoughts about removing that. Um, so, we're leaving that as is. 1.21, leaving that. Um, so, moving on, one point, goal 1 1.3, uh, collaborate AES, Manstein Harbor Port. Uh, related infrastructure and channel. We talked a little bit about this at the last meeting, just in terms of the dredging uh, issue, and I haven't gotten a, a new update, but the, the word of Dull um, is still very close to passing, passing, which would be just a huge milestone um, on navigation. And Manistee has played a very visible, substantial um, role in that whole process. Tim, do you believe by the incorporation of the word port? I do, but I just want to make sure you believe the same thing. By the word incorporation of port, that would include those industries and deep water ports located on Manistee Lake, not just not just within the Manistee River shipping channel. I think by including the term port, that would mm -hmm. mean ensuring that Morton Salt has a deep water port for their availability and that Reith Riley has a deep water port and uh, the, the whole gambit. And if need be, that the city work cooperatively with PCA and TES to ensure that they have deep water port capabilities. So I think that's what that means. But I just want to make sure that in, in more distinct terms. Mm -hmm. I don't believe so, but I just I just wanted to make sure that council had the same feeling that I do about what that term port means. To me, the term port means the entire Manistee Lake, where we can. Te technically, engage. technically, you're absolutely right. That's okay. that is what that means, and it. The port refers to the controlling depth of Manistee Lake that runs up and serves. Um, All the way to PCA. Yeah, yeah. Right. commercial. And that's why I had I had a question activity. on that. Okay. Do we have a master list along with you know like maps that locate all our available assets in the city, such as the uh, deep water ports, industrial roadways? Sure. Um, and everything with up to date info though. Absolutely. Okay. No. The majority of that is just only in the GIS being able to right. pull that information off on the GIS. Now, would uh, the the core partner with the city and dredging the deep water ports I, 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 and Manistee Lake? Um, yes. No. Yes. I mean, uh, yeah. The short answer is yes. Okay. There, there is. There's been some federal federal navigable waters. Okay. There's been some communication about. Um, the establishment of a port authority. Mm -hmm. You've all read about mm -hmm. that. You've all been communicated about that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the other than the port authority being able to leverage <coughs> its own funds, almost like have its own taxing jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure what other incentives that would bring, other than its own taxing jurisdiction. That's the only one I can think of. Um, I've been trying to get hold of. Uh, Burns Harbor, because they have a port authority right. in Burns Harbor. Well, the, best one, the best one's probably to to look at is probably in the state of Michigan. Be the uh, Detroit has a port authority. Mm -hmm. They have the Detroit Port Authority. Um, can you yeah. think of any other? No, that would be the one. And I can't come up with. I, I know the guy that's in charge of that. I can't come up with it right now. But um, 
Anyway, he is, he is very open about Port Authority's enabling statute and what it does and what it doesn't do. And it's he's almost like a source of technical assistance on it. So, um, you know, if the council is interested, we can certainly facilitate better understanding of what the Port Authority's advantages and disadvantages, and also the process you have to go through to actually achieve that designation is pretty rigorous. But we can certainly foster a better understanding of that. But I'm also looking at if you know, there is the possibility of, which was brought up last week, a steel mill of some sort, um, a two-way process, w recycling um, the wood materials and then materials going out, um, keeping all of that in order and traffic flowing smoothly, especially since we have a lot of sport fishing, sport boating, and everything else, um, I really feel that a port authority is something we might want to look into for regulation of waterways. I would think the first step for us, if a, if a port authority is something of interest, is to fully understand what that term means. And then once we understand mm -hmm. what the term means and understand what are the, what are the incentives for looking at it or what are the reasons that we believe it would not be uh, a, a positive for the city of Manistee, and I should say the city of Manistee, the greater Manistee area where, where the watershed is at, Manistee Lake. Um, but I think the first step is just really educating ourselves on the uh, on what a port authority is, the, the positives, the negatives, the benefits <coughs> on that particular thing. And uh, the, the staff can work cooperatively with the AES to almost like put together, not a position paper, just put together some some information for council and present that information for council for future discussion. And then if that's something of interest and benefit, then we can pursue that further. If that makes sense to council. I, I mean, I'd, hear, I'd like to hear more about it. Or just it as a value to, right. to our community and to see what kind of impact it may have on you know other governing uh, agencies within the, the county too. Uh, planning commission and, and our, our authority as a council mm -hmm. and do they supersede and, and you know what's the reporting structure of the port authority because there's some complications that may may surface as a result of that and i hate to mm -hmm. jump into the port authority yeah well, staff, well, staff will just based upon this conversation staff will um will work cooperatively with the aes to investigate that and educate ourselves and, and the return educate council on what that particular and the only reason I brought it, why, I, why I mentioned Burns Harbor and was checking with them is because they're a community about the same size as Manistee. They, they, they ship a heck of a lot more, though. Well, um, I think yeah, I, mean, I, I think I speak for Kathy saying that that's a really good idea to look at, um, <laughs> you know, the assets that we have, the assets we could have, and, and various routes to go about enhancing that as an economic driver. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I would suggest that we just reflect that in the strategy as something Absolutely. that we've done this year, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Sure. Okay. I mean, it, the, what better way to market it or to those, those businesses by saying, here's the logical route in, here's our, you know, the, uh, the ports that, that you can work at. And, um, yeah. as, a, as a for example, there has been some heightened discussion about a high speed ferry in, north, in northern Michigan. So. Is that from Frankfurt? Right. So, uh, yeah, that would be a good discussion to have, okay. and we'll include that. Great. Um, okay, that's, I guess that covers our report. Uh, Gage AES holds a session of neighboring communities, federal state agencies involved with commercial and recreational navigation. Um, we could certainly broaden, I, I think the other neighboring communities would welcome being part of that information education session. That's so I was wondering how that was going, because it was implemented a few years ago. Yeah, and I... I frankly, I think that AES probably wants direction on. Well, I think, it, from my understanding, it's been done. It was prior to my yeah. getting here. I mean, the, the dredging, for example, the dredging conversation, pulling together various entities right. on a certain topic. Um, today, with the Harbor Commission, um, they've adopted the strategic plan that we developed, um, which will be coming to you um, hopefully next couple yes. weeks. Yep. Um, and within that, there was um, a specific charge, so to speak, for um, Arcadia, Onekama, and Manistee to work together, recognizing that they're all harbors along the coastline, each with very different um, resources that each bring to the community, so marketing and, and packaging them as a whole. So 
Um, there's the marketing aspect, but then there's also top, you know, topical such as dredging, or if there's any other specific. Well, this strategy is real specific to commercial and recreational navigation, so I would I would offer that the, the session or however we do that under what we were just discussing, um, you know, if we extend the opportunity for other communities to participate in that, I think they'd welcome it. And it seems like that's a natural <coughs> to look at collaboratively. I don't want to shape things for you, but does that make sense? So. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. the shepherd, you can take us away. Yeah, no, I've got all this shepherd business. Um, okay, good. Um, goal 1.4, uh, gauge AES, work with local businesses and industry, training education opportunities. A lot going on in that area um, with K-12 schools. Um, I don't know if there's anything more that you want on that. I think it's uh, pretty much become a matter of routine at this point. I the kids responding well to it? Good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They love it. Absolutely love it. Okay. I know uh, we had had a conversation uh, where I wear my other hat about uh, not just K through 12, but also the early childhood development programs. Um, and I, I can't, you know, stress that enough as well, that, you know, zero through five age is pretty critical to uh, development beyond that point. So um, it's just some, some food for thought there. You're absolutely right, and, and uh, you want to get—I think you want to get bogged down on that tonight. Yeah. Um, funding, and, and you're absolutely right. Funding to do that in those in those early years is mm -hmm. the only barrier. Yeah, yeah. Is that something we could collaborate with a great start? And looking at is that is that part, oh, sure. of, that part of their mission? I mean, the MCAM okay. program—it's it, right. part of that too. And and right. so it again comes back to funding, but giving s small children. Uh, those kinds of exposures has been proven over and over and over again to be a very positive thing to do. Mm -hmm. right. I would also add um, to Eric's point, what we're saying here specifically K-12, I and mean, maybe we need to expand that because we are talking zero to five, which Early childhood. pre-K, you know, and then also um, post high school. Post high school. Um, so whether again it's you know the MCAM that we're developing, um, the College Access Network, yeah. which isn't just college, but it's. Um, trade, trade school, trade school. Trade school. vocational training, some sort of certification, um, completing high school but going a bit beyond. Mm -hmm. So, in our office specifically, I think I mean, we're, we're host Cynthia Corey, who's the Great Start Coordinator, which is a zero to five, and we're also working on the MCAN. So, I think it's one of those by you know you supporting AES, we're in turn supporting these types of um, activities in the community. So we may want to consider, I mean, we may want to consider a little bit beyond K twelve. Just because we're talking more of a cradle to career approach. Very good. I agree. Just to uh, clarify that the high the schools are working through West Shore on say ele the electric electrician <coughs> trade and uh, <coughs> mechanics and things like that right now. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yes, that's true. It's it's a little bit different than this where. Um, the schools and the ISD are actually coordinating visits into um, mostly our manufacturing base. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's nothing like the um, Wexford, uh, Masaki uh, trade school that is in Cadillac? No. No, it mm -hmm. is not. Uh, I think our trade school is in conjunction with Mason Lake yes. ISD. Yes. So we are Manistee, Mason, Lake, ISD. I'm not sure where the, well, I should know that my wife takes kids there all the time, where, where the vote training occurs, but we're part of that ISD. But it's different from that very technical program which you're familiar with over there in Cadillac. I would say that a great program. we're visiting that soon. That's a great okay. program. Uh, along with other That's institutions over great there, program. Um, courtesy of our um, new ISD mm -hmm. superintendent. Yeah, fantastic. So, and, and we're really anxious to do that because they're it's doing some wonderful. Program. They're doing some wonderful things there. But Manistee High and Catholic Central are working cooperatively with the ISD to implement their uh, the trades uh, for the kids to expose the students. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And a big part of it is exactly that is uh, open eyes about a lot of things, but in, including the the kind of jobs that are available. Uh, particularly in manufacturing, I still think there is not enough uh, comprehension of exactly what those jobs consist of and what they pay because 
we've got great jobs in this community, and I think we need to continue to work on creating awareness. But this is definitely helping. And we hear nothing but positive comments back from both teachers and students. So, uh, okay. Um, goal 1.5 was the revitalization of downtown, Main Street, DDA, Chamber AS. Um, first of all, do you say you need to modify that goal? It's That's kind of an ongoing function, I guess. Sure is. Can we take out the... Strategy 1.51. That's complete. Yeah. To an extent. Well, slide it to the next. Slide it to the next line. Are they? Are there strategies? Well, I certainly think we could list that as an accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was referring to Tim. Thank you. Um. But to cooperate. The revitalization of it. We haven't um, moved forward in the sustainability of it. Of the assist in the, the long range sustainability, but it is revitalized. It is now open and not revitalized. Right. Open. There's still a little bit of capital work that yeah. remains to be done, um, and then I think the the focus will be more on building a, a base of operating capital. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not a city, but that's not uh, our right. yeah. yeah. That would be the focus of the nonprofit. <clears throat> I think that we're. I think that we could say that 1.5.1. Complete. Has been completed, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. As far as the city, as far as correct. the city goes, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what a great cooperative effort that's been. Um, so good. Let's we'll set the accomplishments uh, category strategy one uh, one point five point two plans and new ideas to deliver small business services, bring people to Manistee's downtown. That should be an ongoing. Because it's continuous. I mean, it's a continuous development. Okay. You have to change your trends and. Well, uh, so part of this could be, part of this could be, please don't think I'm promoting this because I'm not. I'm just throwing out suggestions and ideas. Part of this could be is participating in the discussion about the two way traffic. Not saying good, not saying bad, but that's all part of it. Hmm. You know, support the plans and the new ideas, work with them on those concepts. It definitely will be this Thursday we're meeting about trees in the downtown. Mm -hmm. So this, this Thursday we're talking about trees in the downtown. Is it right or is it wrong? Not sure yet. But Jeff and I are going to meet with them. We're going to have those conversations to start having those conversations. I know for sure it's, it's wrong that we shouldn't have trees because we've never had trees. I mean, there may be a perfect reason not to have trees in the downtown. But well, because we didn't have trees in the downtown in the 1920s, probably shouldn't be a good reason why we don't have trees in the downtown in 2014. Um, so I think that goes in all of that. Working with them, um, working with them. We're also having conversations with them on Thursday regarding removal of snow for some of the businesses and stuff like that. As you know, we've got a lot of snow in town. Some of the businesses are kind of full. Uh, a lot of the businesses have four to five foot drifts in front of their their stores, their entranceways, and stuff like that. So we're having all those conversations. So I think all of those concepts support that 1.52 and that particular strategy, working cooperatively with them on those issues. And I have to say that Friday we were downtown for dinner, and I could not believe all of the cars that were downtown. It was cool. It was so nice to see, and with the Saturday boat, it, it was it's like there. Yes. First time I've seen it since we moved here, actually. It's amazing what one venue can draw and push and, and mm -hmm. increase traffic. As a driver. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, it, we were at, uh, we had the uh, new owner of Porch My Inn um, yesterday, and, uh, you know, he's kind of the area, but he looked at me and he says, boy, man, this is really a hot place. <laughs> <laughs> he's all the cars in the, the theater. Definitely. Okay. Um, Next page, um, page nine. So I guess I, I should ask, in, in the area of uh, economic development and jobs, are there any additional goals that you would like to add? Anything new? As long as we're business friendly, and that's all businesses, retail, commercial, and industrial. Do we specifically say that in here? No, no I don't. But I think it goes back to our mission or the goals. It does. I, I got to tell you, I hear, I hear that on our 
continuous basis. Oh, you guys aren't business friendly. Well, well, why do you say that? Well, back 20 years ago, we weren't able to get this, we weren't able to get that. So I, I, I think that putting that in there somewhere, what that does is, what that does is, you put that in there somewhere, and that sets the tone, council sets the tone for when we're talking about mm -hmm. how are we going to deal with the businesses downtown. Right? It, it just, it's, it's a nice tone setter. If it's already, if it's already kind of in there. I, th I think the mission and the vision sets it. I, I think you can put that wording in your document as much as you want, but if you don't have your action plans to back up that statement sure. or follow through with those action plans, you can state all you want. People are still going to have those opinions. I understand. So what, I have a little brain fart here, but the, one of the uh, new strategies um, was to develop a comprehensive asset management um, study of what deep water ports we have and, and, and properties that we have that are for sale that support industrial or business development, correct? Along with uh, um, the arteries and, and, and uh, infrastructure that supports those entities. Okay. That's, that is a strategy we're going to put in. Yes. Okay. So, would, would you like us? Would you like a strategy around identifying and implement steps to make Manistee the most business friendly community it could be? I mean, something like that, or or do you think it's already in here? I haven't seen it. If. Michigan, but last year they expanded it statewide with some pilot communities. Um, this year they have enough capacity, which kind of surprised me, but it's nice to see that they're asking more, more communities to be a part of that. Um, what RRC or Redevelopment Ready Communities is, is a program to um, really kind of, I say a checklist, but kind of say to a community, these are some of the things that you need to have in place to be open for business, so to speak. Um, do you have a strategic plan? Do you have an updated this? Do you have how? Are you, you a know, Main Street community? Are you a Main Street community? Are you doing this? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? And then um, pages upon pages, <laughs> literally, of um, best practices. Are you following this in this category? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? So what they will do is initially ask you to kind of self-evaluate, but then if you're accepted into the program and there's no cost to do, to do so other than your investment and time to make this happen. Um, and then there's potential that if you're deficient on something, they could match you up with some resources to make that happen. Once you are certified that you've gone through and you check all the boxes and all the, you know, the lists, um, MEDC has, um, I don't want to say promote, but kind of essentially promoting that these, this short list of communities are redevelopment ready. So they are working in conjunction with very well-known developers, again, at the state level. Mm -hmm. They have an advisory team statewide, which is a pretty impressive list of uh, private developers, municipal, um, you know, municipal representatives, and um, so, so I have So one of your strategies could be to direct Kathy to assist you in becoming redevelopment ready. Um, mm -hmm. Reminds me of almost like being pre-qualified. For those who are familiar with MDOT, right. you know everyone, MDOT's got, you got to be pre-qualified for all your projects. And if you're pre-qualified, that really sets you straight right. to the forefront right. of those projects. And just as Manistee is a Main Street community, um, you know, our even RRC community is going to be a checkbox as far as you know, MEDC and Michigan and some of the other state agencies. Of, um, and you would see that under the economic development and go to jobs. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. And so, um, again, Denise, this is something I've started. I mean, they, they have an application round open right now. Denise is currently. Denise and I are currently having conversations about, and have had one with you, and we'll have more with Kathy. We were already going to move forward with that particular concept, but. Right. Sure, that's Does, uh, is, it, is it opening doors for additional uh, grants or funding if you're... Uh, I, would, I would think so, um, not... It's going to be a prerequisite at some point. I think... Like everything else. That's what I mean. It would be to do the DA and those other areas. Right. Right. Everything. I, I really so a good housekeeping seal of approval. Exactly. It's, it's actually been... Your gold standard yeah. for... Uh, you know, super developer. Yeah. I can tell you that um, the cities to the north and the south are all moving forward with um, I know Boyne City, I'm sure you did some better session. Boyne City, as you can imagine, uh, Mike King, when I was introduced last year, Mike King was on it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what we met, you know, that's, that's all Mike is. Um, but I think it's 
something that since you know for, I'm, I'm familiar with the project or the process from previous makes sense to me. Once um, we're once we're approved, would MEDC help us promote Manistee then? Yes. Okay. Yes. It is, there's a, a specific website that would be dedicated to it. And again, there's no cost other than the investment, which quite honestly the <clears> things that either were probably either have done or will be doing or should put on the radar anyway, just to ensure um, that the permitting process is smooth, the zoning unit, and at least having those things in place. Again, there's communities that haven't even started that. There's no reason not to do that. So would you like to, I'd like us to include that as a strategy? I sure. Think it should be. Yeah, yeah. probably this year. I think so. The MEDC is using that as a, as a determining factor oh, benchmark. I would say run as right. fast as you can. Right. <laughs> Because there's opportunities, I think, that are that are you know presenting themselves, and obviously we we, we don't want to miss out on any of those. That, that, that. Okay. There. Anything else? You kind of go out in jobs. Okay. Moving on to city infrastructure and facilities. Page nine. Uh, value and develop oversee asset management plan for restoration, preservation, and maintenance of city-owned assets. Um, that's kind of an ongoing thing. It is. We leave that in place. <clears throat> we, we still have not completed 2.11, okay. the building asset management plan, which needs to be completed. Okay. Um, the one, I had a question about 2.12, maintain full compliance with MPDES. I mean, I, you know, quite frankly, I think it should be left on because we have not completed our fixed date schedule. Our fixed date schedule it has us removing. Um, 18. 18, thank you very much, um, by 2016, the, the last outfall. So, uh, tell me, where, where is that one at again? Fifth and Ramsdale. Fifth and Ramsdale is mm -hmm. the last outfall that we have to be <coughs> removed. That has been, our, as per our NDP, NPDES, National Pollution Discharge Elimination System, System. permit, that has to be removed as 2016. So we still have two years to remove that particular. So even though I think we're done with all five of our separate CSO districts, and those have been separated out, I still think we need to keep that one on until we remove 18. Don't forget to put in for that uh, reservoir that we were thinking about doing. I, I mean, that, that's underneath there. Well, that's all part of the saw grant. That's yeah. all part of the saw grant. Yeah. Fresh. I said February 6th. That's what we heard today, okay. early February. Uh, well, so I agree. ask for compliance to determine who's compliant, yeah. and then that will that'll cut the list out a little bit. But right. Well, so then do we just identify um, the one piece that we have left, Mitch, or do we leave that as a whole whole strategy under two point one? I think you leave it till it's complete. I, I think I think yeah. it's okay the way it is. I, I really do believe it's okay the way it is. Um, it's a big priority, so sure. Big priority. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a, it's a, well, it's really interesting. Uh, Ed and I, Ed and I were looking at today uh, reviewing the finance department white paper, and one of the one of the benchmarks was debt, comparing the city of Manistee with other communities for debt. How many debt issues do we have, and what's our debt? And currently, we have 14 bond issues, and our debt is 20 million dollars. You can trace all of it, not all of it, but you can trace darn near 90% of it based upon that negotiations between the city of Manistee and the Manistee and the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality in 1996 where we agreed to that fixed date schedule to separate our sewer system. That almost entire $20 million of debt that we have incurred is for the separation of our sewer system. Uh, most entirely, all of that is for that particular reason. It was just an interesting category when you look at it compared to the other communities. So, not that that needed to be. Okay, uh, 2.2, 2, sustainable model for the Rams. Well, I, I think we need oh, to go back to 2.1. 2. Yeah, 2. Um, this infrastructure and, and facilities, um, obviously the street has Absolutely, been, that's exactly that, what. That strategy needs to be added in here. I think, I think um, it's the strategy, and I think it. Um, uh, uh, well, we, uh, is this where we need to say things like 
we need to develop a matrix for local streets. Well, the, 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 the whole presentation that uh, um, Jeff McCoola gave to us on that uh, the street asset management strategy mm -hmm. and applying for those grants to get uh, a strategic uh, approach to uh, the deteriorating streets and, and what to do about them. Right. Um, that to me is, is inserting that plan that he has is the strategy I think that we want to see here. Um, from my perspective, but maybe I'm, I'm, I'm off. I think it may go a slightly further than that from the standpoint that I do believe council is expecting staff to come back with them as to a strategy on what are the opportunities and possibilities for addressing local streets that don't qualify for state or federal grant dollars. I think that should be it. I think, and so I'm trying to think yes. of the right language to put it in there. But I think we need to have a 2.1.3 yes. that addresses streets. And I'll just use it streets as generic right yeah. now. And we'll bring that back once we, what is the appropriate language. Can we, uh, Mitch, um, we usually make assignments in the sessions. Could we ask you to draft sure. that yes. and then yes. we'll yeah. head yeah. back to council? Insert it in there. We, we really, but that really needs to be incorporated. Yes. Yes. And is there any way that we as a body can begin lobbying our state legislators to start releasing some of those uh, well, revenue the excesses dollars. that they have. Well, I, I think in order for us to be successful on those ventures, I think that I think that has to come from a larger entity. I really believe that the more success we're going to have is is cooperatively working with the Michigan Municipal League to lobby on behalf of how many or 500 municipalities? And we can also um, lobby with our state legislators. We can, we can, we can. Can we partner with somebody like Ludington, uh, Scottville, some of the communities? Uh, I, you I, know, think by, yeah. I think by going through the league aspect, you're doing that. Okay. I really do because they're all league entities. But I think I think if your if your question is start. Uh, is one of the strategies lobbying the state to release additional, to find additional revenue for local street projects. I think that's a fine high in the sky goal. But I think, but I think you can word something in that 2.13 yeah. to accumulate all these ideas into, into that. Into two uh, just a note on in a meeting last Friday uh, with the director of PNR and all the state department heads have been asked to identify high priority funding needs out of the surplus. So discussions with MDOT probably. <laughs> Rick Leptak said he's all over that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anything else under um, goal 2.1? If not, we'll move on to 2.2, sustainable model management of the Ramsdale. Uh, and the strategy being complete to Ramsdale theater white paper. The we white paper's that. complete, but I think that needs to morph into a new strategy. A new, right. a new strategy. So the white paper's complete, but just because the white paper's complete and we fired an executive director doesn't mean we have a sustainable strategy. No, I think the goal's still there. We just need to yeah. yeah. do with right. the same thing we did with you on the uh, street asset management. We asked Mr. Jerry to yeah. come up with uh, uh, Mr. Bradford, Mr. Jerry, to come up with that with right. so, uh, mm -hmm. 2.1. 2 .2 What's the sustainability just model? Change to yeah. a new one. Okay, is that to come up? Is that to develop an operating strategy for the ramp or? I think it, I think it yeah. really is a long term, mm -hmm. long term sustainable, sustainable operating strategy, which will include. Seeing how we're talking about that quickly, it will include um, looking at the organizational model of the Ramsdale Governing Board. Who's on the Ramsdale Governing Board? Uh, some of those, some of those issues. Uh, all right, uh, if nothing more, 2.2, moving to 2.3, explore, develop public private partnerships, provide develop infrastructure, acquire property, target areas and limits to facilitate, promote redevelopment and economic activity. Um, strategy 2.31, work to acquire property rights, redevelop the 9th Street boat launch. Still working on that, and in fact that was listed today as part of a strategy of the Harbor Commission to still work towards that particular facility. Okay. All right. Um, and we continue to have conversations with Morton's and consumers 
on that particular. I can tell you that DNR also contains very soon that yeah, site. Yeah, it's a great spot. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, Identifying that potential property for future economic development activity, we kind of already touched on that in the context of the yeah. port. Mm -hmm. um, is that something we still want to leave on? We certainly can. No, I think that we could accomplish that through the other strategy, unless we're talking about something beyond those. I mean, if this is just uh, residential or um, actually, that would be under one <coughs> under economic development and jobs. Yeah, that's what we said. We yeah. yeah, that's 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 that that So move this to eat maybe economic development. Fold this in. Kind of doesn't, the, uh, doesn't this feel like a <coughs> planning commission? Yeah. Operation or an obligation? Not oper I'm not, I don't want to say obligation. That's not the term I'm, I'm thinking of. But Irving. well, uh, we 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 have we have we have seven citizen trained citizen master, master citizen planners. Their 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 job is for the master plan. That's their that's their main focus. Um, I'm just wondering. I just like to me this feels like this kind of fits in working with the planning commission on that particular project. It, to me, it kind of fits in it. And everything the planning commission does ultimately then is a recommendation back to council, and council has to approve on that. But I just think as a first starting step, that seems to be engaging that citizen body on that would make some sense to me. And we have two that have recently been on the planning commission, I guess I'd... Well, I guess I'd read that in a little different context. They say identify a map potential property for future economic development. From my perspective, that's more of a marketing strategy. How do we market those and map those and market them so we know where those assets are versus the zoning or the uh, the, the things that go along with that? I don't, know, Mark, I don't know if you feel uh, differently about that. But that's kind of by how I vision that. And that's why I said it's similar to the one that uh, we we're going to have Kathy work on from mm -hmm. uh, Deepwell or then in the, uh, the okay. industrial level and, and, and the, the infrastructure that supported those. But this would be on a more uh, smaller scale. Where are our assets and where um, uh, where could that, uh, that sure. be mapped out? But sure. It's one of those things that's a, it's a never, it's always, always updating. We sell it, we, we update it, we, mm -hmm. we somebody, you know, bandage one or whatever. Um, it's one of those things that is never really going away. But if it's a document that we have to market and strategy or uh, strategize how to fill, um, I think that's the, that is how I read it. Okay. Should we should we move that over to economic development? Absolutely. So right. I think so. More right. <coughs> appropriate. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We'll do that. Great. Okay. Goal two point four: uh, identify best use appropriate technology. Improve efficiency, effectiveness, and competitiveness of the city operations and service. Well, we, we, have, we have done that in spades. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Through interconnectivity of the buildings, through wireless connection of the buildings. Through Maybe the, re -change, change the wording. I, I don't think like, I don't think to continue to. Yes, I don't think it ever goes away. Right. I don't think it ever goes away. Uh, down below, continue partnership with the county and GIS. We're doing that. That that is an ongoing. Two point four one and two are done. Aren't they? I mean, they're well, I, they're done, but they're kind of they're ongoing. They're, 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 they're continuous. They become more like activities. They, they they have they have become more of an activity rather than a goal or a strategy. Um, so maybe they just what what, what I'd like to do is is that I believe Ed would be the right person to look at what are some additional strategies of moving the community forward technology wise. Mm -hmm. And what are he? Th what is he thinking out along that? So can we ask you to look at that and get to us any draft yes. language? Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Two point five: Encourage support use of energy efficient technologies, construction methods, promote conservation, sustainability by example and incentive. Again, I think we, we've done that um, and continue to. And you can remove two point five one. Yeah. Um, and we are currently working towards the LED strategies. We are. We just got the. We just got our our street light um, survey back from uh, consumers. Uh, another survey, and we're working with them on upgrading. It's not necessarily LED, but we're going from uh, high pressure sodium to mercury vapor, or from mercury vapor to high pressure sodium, whichever way we're going. 
I'm not sure which way we're going, but we're going in a good direction. Could you let us know so we can include that as an accomplishment in that area? Yeah. So if the strategy's there, is it now implementing versus developing a strategy? I think 2.51 is done, but I think, yes, there should be another a subset under 2.52 on how we're going to yes. develop a strategy for the LED lighting. Yes. You know, like you're... Implementation, blah, 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 we'll not change the strategy, because that's what 5.2 is. So wouldn't it be implement? We've already developed the strategy, haven't we? Yeah, so we need to yeah. implement yeah. Yeah, 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 I understand. and lay out what the strategy yeah, is. And, and please understand, that is a that is a 20-year strategy. Of course. Because um, we, we, are going to, we are going to upgrade from... And again, I don't, I don't remember if it's mercury vapor to high pressure sodium or the uh, vice versa, but we are upgrading to LED where where it makes sense and where it's financially available and where we can get we can rationalize the rate of return. Uh, consumer still has a storage of existing bulbs that they are able to use until they run out. So they have a they have a surplus of the bulbs that they're going to use until they run out and then everything will be converted into LED is my understanding. So we're going from pink to white in other words. Well, I, I think I kind of more of a, I don't know if it's pink, I almost, almost look like a yellow glow. The high pressure sodium always gives me a yellowish glow where the LED is a very white light. And the best example of LED again is River Street East End where we put LED in the new street lights. High school. I think the high school is all the only too. Yeah, and I think that you can see that difference in the white. Okay, so, sorry. I think we got it. We're going to press on. We're going to get this done tonight, right? Um, all right, so I'm going to city beaches, parks, and rec areas. Can, can I ask one question real quick where we're at? I'm looking at, I'm wondering where, I'm wondering where the issue of blight is going to fall in all of these and it doesn't fit into parks and beaks. It doesn't really fall into intergovernmental cooperation. Maybe it does fall into intergovernmental cooperation. Uh, maybe it falls into the housing homelessness scenario. But I'm just asking the question. I'm just looking at where is that going to fall. I mean, it's economic development. It's a bunch of stuff. Right. Well, the, the, note I, the note I had on Blight was for us to work with the city in fostering uh, education awareness about Blight and remedial um, technical and financial assistance available and to develop a strategy for okay. light removal. We just got to find some place. We need a home for it. Right. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Okay. Um, I included it in economic development just because it, it is. Fine. Is that okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put it in there. It's a huge economic development issue. Um, okay. Uh, beaches, parks, rec areas have the cleanest Lake Michigan public beaches, parks in Michigan, universal access. Uh, ask AS to help raise money. Um, strategy 3.1, focus maintenance efforts and improvements made at Fifth Street Beach. Can we back up a minute, please? Sure. Mm -hmm. The conceptual plan, beach conceptual plan, is that the water park down at First Street Beach? Are we talking that? Yeah, I'm sorry for going so fast, yes. Hey, uh, you're talking about, yes, you are. That Beach conceptual plan was adopted in concept by council. That doesn't mean that every one of every single entity and items on that plan will be incorporated, but the concepts for making improvements, uh, council had endorsed that plan. Yes. So it's a new pavilion, fish cleaning station, the new uh, playground that'll be Beach going house, in. playground. <clears throat> Maybe not water slides. <laughs> but, uh, you can just spend a lot but I mean, not water slides. You can jump off the splash zone. My kid would love to see you struggle with their splash back. Yes, they are. That was not good. Not good at that. Um, it's a plumbing issue. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, excuse me for going too fast, uh, but strategy 3.1.1, um, focus maintenance efforts improvements made to, I'm not sure. That needs to stay. It, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. 
uh, develop parks maintenance management plan. Well, I like to go back to 3.1. I'd like sure. to um, address that like I did during our, our pre our meeting before that about Fifth Avenue Beaches, about getting some kind of picnic tables, uh, cabana type arrangements down there. I'd like to see that as a goal for the council. That's I know we already got five thousand dollars set aside for that, and I was hoping that we could get the landed what resource or whatever to, to kind of get and have Mitch explore that to generate some more additional money and us put some money and make it a goal and, and put something down there for um, for picnic tables and stuff like that. Like the cabana in that NIA area. You mean like the cabana pass, yeah. something yeah. that could be taken yeah. care of. You know, I'm not talking a hundred of them, Correct. three, four of them, but a little concrete path that way it reduces down on the maintenance. You don't have to worry about the grass, but yes, it's usable. The old shelter. Yeah, for the old shelter. Yes. Yeah. Three, a grand, three grand idea. Because we Thank know you. that Jeff likes yeah. concrete. Three, for, three to four. Kind of of, maintenance. Three, three to four of those probably would run in excess of a hundred thousand dollars. Um, well, we can do it. What we? I'm just saying, three to four of those is going to run in excess of a hundred thousand. Um, maybe, well, maybe, maybe the strategy. Out. Maybe the strategy yeah. should. Well, I don't. I don't want to speak on the strategy. I mean, I hear what you're saying. The strategy is develop a plan and almost a timeline, if you will, for I, exploring revenue opportunities to put some like to see picnic both. shelters down there. I think you can start small and then work, oh, yeah. and then work your way to it. You don't have. I don't think we're asking to do a hundred thousand dollars in one year, but. I think if you put some pads in and picnic tables, maybe a year. Pads with a shelter. Well, just the pads with uh, picnic tables, and then the next year maybe put a cabana in or something. Well, you can do one or two yeah. cabanas. Yeah. I'm not saying yeah. you got to do sense. a house. Makes sense. I think except, that's kind of far out. Makes sense, except it's not very free. I got a long run from a parking lot to get there, where I go up steps. Maybe going up steps are used to there. Just. The steps are still there, and, and, and I tell you what, half the people jump up on top. Got excess on on the west side, no south side, and and the east side, and actually coming from the pavilion right there, right through the, through the um, sand itself, they have a picnic. And so I mean, it's excess from all sides. I understand, but, but one of our goals, one of our goals, is to have is universal accessibility. If you go to the front of that. It really talks about universal accessibility towards. Well, let's not get too caught up in, in, in the implementation. I think the, the the idea is let's develop a strategy to, to implement something at Fifth Avenue that, mm -hmm. Beach that that, 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 does, down the road. That, that does not include trying to plant grass down there. Yeah. Well, Sorry. I, I thought that. <laughs> you right, okay. that you here. already brought that up, and, and I just bought it. I, I just saw right into your eye, and I think that's the perfect package down yeah. there. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I want to move forward with that at least. At least do one this year. Let's do, let's do a plan and at least put one down there, and then we can continue each year. Are there I mean, any, we don't have to spend a hundred thousand bucks. Are there any grant grants available to to give ADS? something to give something in this year? No. Well, yeah. the answer is yes. The answer is could you look at grant sources? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Are there multiple grant sources? I would think so. Um, would there be grant sources where it could occur state grants which could allow us to put something in in the 2014 summer season no i think the uh passport fund would be a perfect one for I this do too. Uh, you done it, yeah. but i don't think it's even it'd be next year it'd be for the fifth that's great it'd be 15. develop it and do it right I, I so if you say it energize it for next year i'm not really sure we got this term you say installed one Oh, yeah, and I can't do it. Some kind of former NIA. Okay. okay. So we work with you know, you know, like passport and fund that I think passport were just state state okay. right. A lot of the pub storage is up for their licensing agreement, and they're going to have a lot of funds available for. It. Yes. Yes, they are. Uh, did you get that notification? Yes. Yeah. 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 So, yep. Part of the uh, the grant that will, to get our state license again will uh, include. Um, funding parks and recreation issues for fishers. Sure, sure. <coughs> yeah. We'll be funded for until 2020. We're trying to get a 50 year one, but it probably going to be a 30 year yeah. license. Okay. That's good news. Uh, okay, I think we have that one. And that actually is a different, that's a separate strategy. I have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, parks maintenance management plan. 
they're currently drafting it. I mean, it's, I think it's they've incorporated some of those concepts last year, but I don't know if they have formalized that particular plan. So that still is mm -hmm. okay. Uh, 3.13 maintains signage for patrols, budget allows, ensure compliance enforcement laws. Signage is traditionally put down there. Uh, foot patrols have been exceedingly difficult for the last couple of years. I'd like to put, keep it in there if funds are available or if we can structure arrangements such as with the LRBOI officers and such. I still think that has mm -hmm. value to it. Okay. 3.14, location associated policies that would allow responsible dog owners to have access to Lake Michigan and other public places in the city with their dogs. Yes. 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 <laughs> Best boating facilities on Lake Michigan shoreline. Um, upgrade First Street boat launch in accord with First Street upgrade project. Um, that's been did we do that? It's done, but you know, when, whenever we have low water in there, I mean, even though we're having a banner season for snow this year, um, we're still at uh, we're still at that low water that trend, uh, and we're still not trending on that. And so much of what's going to depend on how Lake Superior does is how our water levels are going to be next right. year. Uh, we leave it, or? I think we leave it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I think by the fact that Hopefully our facility is located, our facility is located on that that system that just is very dependent upon other water sources. Yeah, and your launches are some of the most crucial on Lake Michigan. Uh, it is the most crucial, I think, on Lake Michigan. Yeah. So 3.22, I think I've, we've already heard that you want to keep this one in play. Yes. Yeah. Okay, 3.23, research upgrade, first street boat launch, auto attendant. Backup plan if the auto attendant is disabled. We're having those conversations, That's which done. will be incorporated in this fiscal year budget. Okay. That was also in the Harbor Commission. It is, absolutely. Okay. Thank you for reminding me of that. Uh, three point, th anything else under that goal? Best sporting facilities in Lake Michigan Shoreline. Mm. Uh, 3.3 three goal uh, develop and adopt capital improvement plan for parks and rec areas, recommends upgrades and costs. Develop and implement park asset management plan. That's what they're working on. Okay, so that's all in process. Uh, explore public private partnerships, establish amenities and attractions, enhance recreation opportunities in beaches, park, recreation areas for the city of Main City. Is there really progress made on that, Mitch? I don't believe so. Not that I'm aware of, no. Because, to my way of thinking, if, if not, we need to begin seriously thinking, you know, if there if there's no progress made in the, like a volunteer adopt a park program, well, part, part me, something say, like this. Yeah. I mean, I think there will be plenty of I think there will be plenty of desire to uh, and plenty of applicants for uh, the beach facilities, the concession facilities, which no, is part of that. Yeah, but I'm talking yeah, about the rest of our parks that need. Well, the we assistance. We currently, the, the Parks and Beautification Commission right now is having conversations around adopted park programs right now, which are addressing some of those specific issues right now. They are having those conversations, which I think would fit well within 3.4.1. Do you want us to amend that a little bit by saying including the developing? It might be an idea. Adopt a park program. Sure. I don't think the it would be that. The evolving adopt a park program. Mm -hmm. okay. We've never had anything in the strategies about uh, uh, food trucks. Is that anything that has come up in the city? Have we had any applications or anything? Or Request. Yeah, we've had we've had on several yeah, occasions. Yeah, the, the, ice cream. Yeah, yeah. the gentleman that wanted to go to the various sporting events, whether it be MRA baseball games or remember like the food trucks, trucks like we yeah. saw at the but really MML convention. Not that it's been more ice cream related during the summer months. Yeah. Of that, that's what we had. The people have, but not the not the not the food trucks. Are no. we prepared though for when? Because it will happen. Eventually, there there are there is language in the ordinance which addresses that. Yes. Okay. All right. 
Did the gentleman last year that came before the council? Did he ever? Not that I'm aware of. I, I mean, I think he went to his. I didn't. I didn't see him at one event. Okay. He had that great concept. Yeah. With the yeah. Classical. Uh, it's still out front of his house. <laughs> Was he running last year? I mean, did it operate last year? No, I don't think so. He so. gave it up the approval, but I don't think it was. been there before then, wasn't there? I know there was. That was, that was a different one. Oh. That was a different one. That was uh, another ice cream. Okay. Um, all right, moving on, page 11, financial stability, continuous improvement. Um, 4.1, achieve three year goals by council without increasing the millage rate. Maybe that's the Okay. Uh, maintain three-year financial forecasts of revenue, income, operating expenses. Having said that, having said that, one of, um, I mean, I think that's a fine goal, 4.1. I think it's a great goal. It's one we have honored. One one of the issues that you're going to look at when you, when you start looking at street money and those things available, one of the issues and topics is going to be a dedicated millage. There's no question that that will be back in front of you as part of those street conversations. Mm -hmm. And if we continue to see declining revenues and personal property tax and various other ways, council is going to have to make a choice as to we maintain the existing service level or do we reduce the existing service level based upon the available revenue. I think this is a great goal for us to keep this year. Yeah, I was going to say this year we still, but I don't believe that it's not sustainable. Through the evaluation process of our street management plans, we will next year correct. build something that may or, or potentially for this one yeah. coming November. Yes. Well, it is next year, correct. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. correct. so it'll be for next year. Uh, Got it. I think if we do uh, proceed with a with a road millage, I think we really have to. Uh, educate the public on why, you know. Well, it's the only way to do it. It's the only way. They need to be able to make an informed and educated decision, just like I asked you to make sure. an informed and educated decision on every council topic. Mm -hmm. Same thing. All right. Maintain the three-year financial forecasts, mm -hmm. revenue, income, operating expenses. Mm -hmm. And that's happening now. It is. is it? Yeah. Um, so we leave that in. Mm -hmm. Uh, 4.11 yearly budget strategic plan calendar. You've got that in place. I saw, I saw that today for the first time, the first copy review. Uh, hopefully, that will be going out to council by this Friday. Okay. So, is that an accomplishment, Mitch? I mean, are, are we poised to? I think it is. I think it's it's more of a it's more of a general operations right now than a okay. than a strategy. Great. It's something that's just been incorporated into general practice. Great. So, is 4.2 the same? Same thing then? I mean, is that just practice? We're doing that every year. Is it tactical now? Is it policy it, it strategic? Is, it is very tactical from, mm -hmm. from my perspective. Can we uh, identify it as an accomplishment and remove yeah, that's it? What, that's, that's, right. a, that's a really good point. Thank you. Okay, sure. City Council and City Government have the capabilities to competitively position the city through improvement to professional development, capacity building, leadership development. That had to do with the internal capacity. I think, I think that's tactical also. I mean, yeah. There, yeah. there's the ability for the league conferences, there's the ability for um, the county summit, there's the ability for the elected officials academy. And it's all the structure for process. us to have that development, and now it's tactical and implementation. Right. And, 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 it's, and funds are budgeted annually yeah. for that type of Great. Mm -hmm. process for council. Terrific. Have an ongoing process to assess and ensure efficiency and effectiveness of city services, including review of best practices. Uh, if needed, city's dash dashboard is a tool for measuring meaningful results. We need to change that to the city's EVIP rather than dashboard now because Governor yeah. Snyder has changed that terminology. Economic, vitality, incentive, incentive program. program. Mm -hmm. um, those are all being done. Um, I think we should leave 4.4 because we have not completed all of the white papers yet. We're in the process of completing all those white papers, but they have not been completed yet. And I don't think we're ever really over assessing uh, some of the, the services we provide. Um, and, and again, it goes back to what you mentioned earlier. Mentioned out there, there are going to be times when um, you know budgets and, and declining budgets are, are going to affect those services. So we've got to continuously assess that and strategically, uh, you know, 
develop strategies that um, have minimal impact to our, our citizens and, and maximum effect on, on the services we provide. So. Correct. Good. On 441, um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but haven't we done the white paper on community development? Yes. Done the white paper on community development. So scratch that. Yeah. The so next one is we're doing the finance, treasurer, clerk, treasurer, the next couple of weeks. And the one after that will be the city managers after that. So we'll add city manager mm -hmm. to okay. And we'll move uh, community development to right. accomplishment. I think so. Anything else? Yes, sir. Did you do one on your, on your the utilities yet? Yeah? Utilities is part yeah, of the DPW. Yeah, that's part of the DPW. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I remember. Yes, yes. Anything else on financial stability and continuous improvement? <clears throat> okay. I, just, I wonder if there shouldn't be something in here about um, um, putting the city in a, uh, a position of being familiar with changing laws that are going to impact ensuring that we are on top of changing laws which are going to impact whether that's PPT, whether that's um, different standards, there's other issues. Which Is that part of is our strategic plan though? Isn't that just general operating? Probably it is. Strategy? Yeah. It's just so crucial yeah. to be ahead of that curve and to understand what's coming down the pipeline. That's what we have you for. If we have, if we end up with a different city manager, it'll go in. I appreciate that, but I will tell you that Ed Bradford also is an amazing yeah. asset yeah. For, yeah. For, for, for keeping the city abreast on those issues. And obviously our legal counsel as well. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay intergovernmental relationships. Uh, collaborative units, leverage technology, provide services, wastewater treatment. Uh, joint economic development and safety services. We need to probably incorporate uh, BF Fowler Charter Township in there. Right now we're in conversations with Manistee Township. Mm -hmm. You may want to incorporate that. I think we should also incorporate the uh, uh, Little River Band of Ottawa Indians in this particular conversation. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's, three, it's a three way discussion. And I'm not sure if you want to put Manistee County in there, but it really is a three way. Let us draft something for that, yep. for the draft document. Yep. Uh, collaborative meeting with our neighboring um, counties and cities. We talked about doing something you know, with the port, with the neighboring communities. Um, is this still, still something we want to leave in here? Well, I just think there's some, some discussion about that, and, and maybe Kathy can speak a little bit about that from that uh, whole joint effort between Mason and Manistee, and you know, are there still discussions happening, and um, should that still be on our radar from a strategy? Um, I think that should be something that should be ongoing, um, you know, with every development that takes place. But instead of exploring, I'd rather see something stronger, like do it. Implementing? Yeah, thank you. How about we say explore and implement? Very good. Again, we talked about it last year, uh, meeting with the Ludington City Council, and uh, you know, kind of go back and forth. And I, I think that's very important. Uh, we haven't uh, met with them for years. In years. And, you know, one one thing we did do it. It was in part of your direction. We held a um, joint meeting of. Many, many communities up now about Lakeshore and the dredging issue. We did it from Pentwater all the way around to Le all the way up to Leland. Yeah. But I'd like to see the council meet with their council. Yeah, uh, it, it was amazing what we got out of that. So sure. it's, yeah. Uh, okay, can you explore intergovernmental service sharing opportunities? Uh, yeah, I think that's an important one to keep on. There are still items on the OSA, yeah. such as, such as, um, Getting a digital uh, recording, a uh, digital inventory of our, of our, um, uh, not the police, the um, evidence room, digital. So there's still things on the OSA which I think have merit for us to accomplish in moving forward on. Mm -hmm. Any other, um, any other goals under intergovernmental relationships? Okay, down to last here, home stretch. Housing, homelessness, and senior citizens. Um, 
post long-term housing needs the entire population by partnering with a whole lot of folks to develop a housing strategy. Um, I think we can actually update you on that, um, to work collaboratively with the Housing Commission, supporting their efforts to address low to meet moderate housing needs. I think we can update you on that very quickly. Uh, there was a, actually kind of a definitive meeting held three weeks ago, two weeks ago. <laughs> Uh, with, all, I mean, with all of uh, those agencies and, and really a lot more, there was probably 20 or so organizations represented um, around this issue. And the consensus was that we would forge together to find the resources to develop a housing strategy for the county. And also to note, not just necessarily affordable housing, but the whole spectrum of housing um, to accommodate, say, an example of a physician recruitment um, or you know a young professional family or just kind of the whole spectrum of um, you know reviewing senior housing and affordable housing which most social service agencies are focusing on that low facet moderate. you know the lower to moderate, low to moderate income or senior but again there's a whole spectrum so do we need a new strategy under there for that new spectrum i think we addressed the low to mod under 6.1 <coughs> but the question is do we need a new strategy to address what you're referring to. Can you help us draft that? I think so because, you know, we're, right. we're talking, you know, if there's you know, different, you know, job so you put that activities, down to if you, if you noted in that meeting, and if you have between minor and then in several yeah. projects we're talking mm -hmm. about, you have an influx of people coming to the community, where are those people going to live? Um, we had this one of the things you know, the, this also we have high range employees yeah. coming in, couldn't find suitable yeah. residents. And, and yeah. Robert members are going to see Carson Road participating in that meeting and said that's what you know, And we always talk about long term housing. Yes. Work with the tribe and the housing yes. commission. Well, we will like to, there's a actually there's a real solid coalition of groups and we'll include those in this and draft it for your review. But even though we talk about the long term housing needs, we also have homelessness in there. Yes. And we need to discuss short term housing. Yes. And it, the, the beauty that it was one of the better meetings I've been at in a while. Uh, the beauty of that meeting was it was very inclusive okay. of, of all of the above. And everybody was on board. No dissension. So um, so is there anything else tonight that you wish to add to this? And what, what we will do um, is by the end of next week, we will have a draft of this back to you all. Actually, I would like to see a seventh goal. Okay. And that would be the creation and implementation of city emergency management plan. As special with a special in, with special emphasis on developing crisis communication. This was a major problem across the state this last winter when we well this last month when the temperatures plunged, the ice storm came through, and cities across this state it just it was a mess. Isn't that isn't that already a obligation and responsibility of the emergency management coordinator, Ken Falk, mm -hmm. through the that, county sheriff. That's only if the county declares. If the city has a problem, the county's not involved. Well, I, I'm not sure. I, 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 my, was my understanding is, is that the city could make certain declarations and then the county will honor those declarations. Yeah. The city still itself needs, I, I truly do feel that it needs its own emergency management plan. I have no problem putting that on there. Um, can I have a conversation with sure. Chief Blackman and then get back to council where he's at with that particular one? So, Mitch, would, would you, with, it, with regard to the time, you to have this redraft back to everybody by the end of next week, would you be able to give us <coughs> feedback to include something? So, uh, for this particular yeah. one? Absolutely. Okay. And I'd like to be included in that discussion too, if I could. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure I can coordinate that before. I'm going to be gone for a week. Oh, that's right. So I'm not sure I can. I'll try. I'll try if I can coordinate that with your schedule and Dave's schedule. Mm -hmm. I'll do my best to have that conversation. Great. Maybe we can just do it. It may have to be a phone conversation. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, hush. She, yeah. she just said you might have to get up early. Oh, well, which I have no problem. We have the same schedule, so it's not an issue for us. I'll get them. We usually get along with each other so well. 7 a.m. works great, doesn't it? Oh. All right, so. Thank you. Anything else for are going to cause? I appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Really Thank you. Thank you. Great job. You made nervous progress since 2007. Thanks, Tim.